Hello world, I'm your host Nixon Sylvain and I'm here with my co-host Adney Godin. Cecil Godin, we're here for another episode. It's another episode of a rewind. Uh, we haven't done a rewind in a while. <laughs> Actually, we did. We did Jesus. Jesus Christ was a rewind. So I would encourage you to go back to listen to the Jesus Rewind episode. It's going to bless your life. But we're going to do a top three um, of quarter one. Adney, before I start, how you doing? I am blessed. I really can't complain. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for these um, next couple of rewinds because these episodes were really good. They, they, yes. They were really, really good. So I'm excited. Amen. How are you doing? I'm excited. Same here. I'm excited. And uh, I think it's always good to go back um, and listen to these rewinds. And I think sometimes um, that's our life. We go back and we, we God deliver us from certain situations, circumstances. And I think for us to go back and take those stories and take those testimonies and share it with the world or share it with somebody because there might be someone that might be going through it. They'd be like, oh, I don't even know how to get out of this. My world is upside down. But God has delivered someone to take that message to share with that individual that's going through it. So that's, a, that's the, the good thing about going back. Um, the bad thing about going back, you don't want to go back to what you are, what you know before Christ. <laughs> That's the bad thing. You want to go back and take what you need to take and move forward to bless somebody else. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, so this is the top three uh, of quarter one, and I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, first, I'll be talking about uh, episode 73, uh, God Reached Me in the Club, part one. Uh, episode 75, The Good Thing Guru. And lastly, we'll play uh, episode 77, Love Found Me. So I'm going to play uh, the first episode, episode 73. Did this, and I'm just going off, and Dad, and I don't know why God did this, and da 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 and I'm just going off, and God, this, and he allowed this to happen, and da 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 da, da and he let me get it all out. And then he said, son, did God make you marry that woman? I was like, ooh. Did God make you marry that woman? That was your choice. And that's what we have to realize in life is that we have that free will. We make choices. And sometimes there are consequences from some choices that we make, especially when it goes against God. That's why it's so important for us to pray before we make any decisions. Make sure that it's of God's will and not our own will and our own selfish ambitions of what we think. Because sometimes we can dress that thing up and make it think like, oh, this is God's will because it sounds good because that's what you want to do. But God, but God. and when- Adney, this was one of my favorite episodes. This was good. You know, this episode, he said a few things that reminded me of my past because, you know, I, Brother Nick used to be a clubber. I used to, I used to, what kind, what's the name of the dances they got now? You know, I, I don't know what, kind, oh, you don't know. Uh, okay, I'll try to get you, huh? <laughs> Addy, see, if, yeah, if y'all would have seen the video, Addy, like, I don't know. I've been to Let church as long as you. The, the dances they have now, they're just old dances that we used to do that they renamed. That's Period. true. That's true. That's true. But I like his episode. He have, man, brother um, Arvell had quite a story he kind of took us on one of those rides like if you had like popcorn and and you was in a movie theater it's like you and you know you'd be listening or watching him like man it was it was quite a a story i like what he talked about when he was in a club right and how god had to reach him in a club because he got tired of you know doing that kind of lifestyle i think at some point in our lives they get old you know i was talking to someone about that the other day uh, at my job, Adney, I'm like, yeah, you know, I used to club. I used to do that. I said, but at some point, it gets old. Don't be that 50-year-old man or 60-year-old man with an earring and, and with your um, the chest. You know how they unbutton the um, the buttons, the 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 first, what do they call it? The first two, three buttons. You see a little hair sticking up. Don't be that man in the club pulling on them little girls. Get in the church. Repent. <laughs> Yeah, but this was one of my um, favorite episodes. Brother Arbel went in. So if y'all, y'all need to go back and listen to the whole episode, episode 73. But Addy, what you got to say about this episode? 
I love how he said, my dad asked me, did God tell you to marry that woman? Yeah. It was your choice. You chose. And then he said, sometimes we make decisions masking them as God giving us the okay to move forward with the situation. So it's always best to pray before you make any decision to see what God desires. And that's what it's all about. When we think of Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Do we pray before we move forward in any situation? Job, relationship, family, whatever the case may be, we need to learn how to go to God and say, Lord, is this for me? If not, remove it. Remove me. And that's one of the things that uh, uh, that really got me that he said, I'm like, wow, how many decisions have we made? And we didn't even include God in the, in the process. But we said, oh, God, bless me. Oh, God, open this door. And that was one of the things that I could say for me, like I moved. I was like, God, if, if this is what you really want, you're going to have to show me this is what you want. And when I say he showed, he showed. Amen. Yeah, I, I enjoy this episode. But Adam, you know, I would say this. I enjoy all the episodes. I, I know that we have the top three. But these, for some apparent reason, people are gravitating towards these episodes. They love them. But if I were to choose, um, I like all the episodes. I, I think all of our guests, it's not to take away from any guests that have been a part of this platform. Um, I think everybody has a story, even if you share with one person, even if one person is being blessed. Um, because I believe everybody have a story to share to at least one person. But this is our thing. We do rewinds. So we do rewinds. We do top threes, top episodes. So it's not to take away from any guest. So I just want to make that clear. So moving on to the next episode, uh, episode 75. This was another good one. The Good Thing Guru. Um, she is the founder of the Wife University. So y'all could check her out um, by going on, listening to episode 75. And all her information is on, under the show notes. But let me, let's go ahead and listen to what the wife the host, well, the host, the creator of the Wife University has to say in this podcast. Be out on the street. And at this point, you know, again, I'm pregnant. And he was like, well, I just, you know, I was waiting until the right time to tell you. And I said, well, how can you even begin a marriage with that kind of a secret? I said, does your mother know? And I know I'm putting business out here on the street. And this is not, again, to bash him, but this is to give people a real picture. You know, we don't like to talk about those ugly things that happen. And, and then how do you address them? And uh, he said, no, my mother doesn't even know. And the mother was a co-signer on, on the mortgage. And I said, well, you really need to tell your mom. You really need, I said, I know this is a, a, a big burden. I know you've been carrying this. I know you have been trying to figure out what to do, but it's now time to put everything out in the open so we can figure out what we're going to do. Because again, any day we could be out on the street. And I'll just say this, Brother Nick, it was really hard to get over the trust. I felt like I had uh, been betrayed. Um, I felt like, what else is he hiding from me that I don't know? I felt like... Um, here you were supposed to be my covering. And I felt very uncovered. <laughs> Adney, at, oh, look, this episode right here, because I could relate because I'm married. So for her to share her story, the things that she went through, I, I don't think any woman should go through that. Any married woman, let alone every every single woman as well, because there's women that's, that's um, engaged, right? They're engaged and, and, you know, I don't believe any woman or man, men, men go through it too, but it's not as uh, common. <laughs> it's not as common as a woman, but uh, she went through it, man. And I believe what Sister Kim Cleveland is doing now, she's bringing awareness to uh, women about what all what it what marriage all entails. Because I think sometimes when people get engaged, I don't think sometimes they understand what they're getting into. 
because marriage is a godly thing. Marriage, I, Adney, I always tell folks this, and I got to say this on the platform because I don't know if somebody's thinking about marriage or or maybe possibly they might be married. See, what I always tell single people, Adney, I said, make sure you get a good relationship with God. That's you. Don't focus on a person. And I said, this person that you're about to marry or even thinking about married or maybe your future spouse, number one, you want to pray for them. You don't know them yet. You want to pray for them. And you want to pray that they have a, a relationship with God. Because if you got one person have a relationship with God and the other person have a relationship with God, you bring those two together. Now God is the foundation of your household. Now you can't have one person on fire for the Lord and the other person is like, uh, yeah. I mean, it's doable. It could be done because we know what 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says. It's doable. But it, it, it could be a little difficult. You know, when you got one person going hard for the Lord and somebody's like, uh, that foundation might be a little shaky, but still it is best to, to marry somebody that really loves God. And, and I think, um, a lot of people need to really go through counseling, Adney. They need to go through some kind of spiritual counseling before they get married and they need to throw everything out there. That's what me and my wife did. We, we got spiritual counseling and, and we just threw everything out there. And then I knew my wife really loved the Lord, and she knew that I really loved the Lord. And we're like, well, since both of us love the Lord, we might as well, right? <laughs> but what are your thoughts on, on this episode? I love how she said, the trust was broken. You were supposed to be my covering, and you left me uncovered. Um, she gave us something, especially us single women who desire marriage, that if you're dating someone and you don't feel safe with them why are you there what's the point just to say that you have a piece of a man like you don't feel safe you don't feel covered i mean if he's not showing you now that he could protect you that he could cover you what's the point point? and i think that's what we not just women men if she's not showing you that she could protect your heart, like be your rib, what's the point? Why are you there? Why? Just to say you have a piece of a woman and you're not lonely and your bed is warm? What's the point? So I love how she's been, and I've been working with her. I started working with her in January. One of the sisters, um, she blessed me to be a part of her, um, her academy or her or uh, exclusive community. And let me tell you, the questions she asked, hmm. some of them are so uncomfortable. And there's work that has to be done as single women. There's work that done as single men. If you have in your mind that one day I'm going to be a husband or one day I'm going to be a wife, there's work that needs to be done. There's luggage that needs to be unpacked and burnt. You can't unpack it and put it back in the bag. Like you gotta unpack it, burn it, and let it go, drop it. And those are the things that we're learning to be that good thing and for him to find his good thing. Um, and that's what I really want to share. Like she understands that marriage is not about funds and games. It's about really becoming yeah. that, that good thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's powerful. Um, I just want to say just one quick thing. Um, so when it comes with marriage, even um, prior to marriage, sometimes the signs are there, but what people do, they ignore the signs. So sometimes God will reveal to you, no, that's not your spouse. Um, you already see certain signs in individuals, but sometimes we let our emotions get in the way and we still end up marrying that individual and then now the individual bring those same situations to your marriage. And you're like, whoa, 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 what happened? And like God had to remind you, hey, I showed you the signs, but you just over, or you overrode or, or you override. <laughs> you was overriding the signs that I was showing you. So sometimes it, it, it happens. But let's go on to the next episode. The next episode is, is called Love uh, Found Me. So we went from the wife universe. No, we went from the, in the club, God delivered me in the club. To now the good thing guru, and now we're going to love, love have found me, love have found me, amen. So let's go ahead and play episode 
Uh, that, that would be episode 77. To accept when a child is not mature enough to accept, it dictates how you're going to act. And oftentimes, and I have you uh, uh, acting out in very, very negative ways, it, it confuses you. It can confuse your sexual identity. It can confuse uh, whether or not you, that the, the relationships that you get in, sometimes you expect certain things because if you are in a cycle of abuse, sometimes we accept that's how it's going to be. And we don't know that we deserve better. As I continue to grow, I realized that even my mom um, went through so many negative situations and she did the best she could my mom's a beautiful person will give you anything but the thing is she was also unhealthy she never got help so she passed that negativity unfortunately on to her children wow she passed that negativity onto her children but you know what she was talking about earlier how certain behaviors you could see in children or even she she had certain behaviors and i think that that had a lot to do with the abuse and we talked about that in the episode you that was the episode that you conducted and you did a real real good job having that discussion with sister Roz. i was in the background just mm-hmm, this is a good one right here this is a good one and sister Roz is one of those powerful sisters but but i i would t- say this and i need maybe you could talk more about this episode and and I believe I talked about this in the past that when you the, the, if you see a behavioral change in your daughters or sons because it happens to young men as well, you need to ask some questions. Better be aware that somebody is not violating their privacy or violate them in a certain way. Adney would call that stolen innocence. They trying to steal your innocence. So as Roz alluded to. She had behavioral changes uh, because of the abuse and even dysfunctional. She, she said her, her mother, her mother had certain negativity. Again, she, we love our parents. Andy, we love our parents. We love them dearly. But at, at the end of the day, what breaks a lot of those uh, spiritual strongholds is Jesus Christ. So when you lack that foundation, and even if you have that foundation, but if you're not applying it, then there's a lot of ramifications that there could be a lot of spiritual dynamics that could happen in your home. And you may be like, what's, I don't know what's going on because you lack of, you lack that um, principle of applying what you've known by way of the word of God. So I'm going to let you add on to sister Ra's episode. Cause I know it was you that had the pleasure to have a discussion with her. I loved her vulnerability. I loved her honesty and I loved how she shared. One thing I want people to understand, as the generations uh, evolve, it's not the same, right? I made it perfectly clear to both my children, and I always ask them questions. Did anybody touch? Did they do? Yeah. La, da, 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 da. Parents back in the day, they were scared to ask that question. And you're scared to ask that question because you don't want the answer. And you don't want the answer because then what do I do? Especially if it's being done by someone you love. Like, how could this person do this to my child? And then you still stay with that person. And 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 that's what came to my mind. Like, we look at these kids and we say, oh, they're fast. They're this and they're that. And you're not saying, why is she fast? Why does she have such a bad attitude? Why does she behave that way? Or why is he doing that? It's time for us to honestly be honest, honestly be honest and say, as parents, we don't know how to govern our children and we don't know how do we allow them to express themselves. We don't know how that. It's okay. There's help out there. There's communication classes. There's everything out there now that you can use to help you communicate with your kids. But when she shared about the toxicity that was taking place in the home, I related. I grew up in a toxic home. I grew up where my aunt would call us everything but a child of God. And I knew when I left her house, I would not do that to my kids. As far as my mouth, you know, 
talking to them and, and being very toxic. But guess what? I still had toxic ways that I had to divorce. So once I understood that, and like you said, Brother Nick, a lot of that stuff, only Jesus can clean it up. Because when Jesus revealed to me my toxic ways, man, I went to my children and I apologized. I repented. I repented to God and I repented to my kids because it wasn't fair to them. It wasn't their fault. So I just want people to understand. Give your children a voice. Let them share. Don't muzzle them. Do not muzzle your child, children. Let them share what's on their heart in a respectful way, of course. And that's what I got. Amen. Amen. All right, world. So there you have it. The top three episodes for quarter one uh episode 73 75 and 77 go back and listen and also share if these episodes are blessing you or if you feel it could be a blessing to someone else please share it thank you again and remember that jesus christ is the king of kings and he's the lord of lords That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.